A new research su suggests the number of blind people across the world is set to triple within the next four decades. Writing in the medical journal Lancet Global Health, researchers predict cases will rise from 36 million to 115 million by 2050 if treatment is not improved by better funding. They say a growing aging population is behind the rising numbers and some of the highest rates of blindness and vision impairment are in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Analysis of data from 188 countries suggests there are more than 200 million people with moderate to severe vision impairment. That figure is expected to rise to more than 550 million by 2050. The study calls for better investment in treatments such as cataract surgery and ensuring people have access to appropriate vision correcting glasses. Now, social media powerhouses, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, allows us to share aspects of our lives with our friends, family, and the world. But what does what we are sharing say about our state of mind? Some new research suggests that it may be telling the world a lot more than we think. VOA's Kevin Enox reports. We live in the age of sharing. Events, great and small, Moments, big and little, become chapters in the book of our online lives. It turns out some of the information you're sharing may be saying more about you than you think, says Chris Danforth via Skype. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, with so much more of our life happening on the, on the Internet these days uh, and the ubiquity of mobile phones in our lives, um, there's just a lot more that we're revealing about our behavior maybe than we're even aware of. The mathematician and his colleague Peter Dodds created some machine learning tools to analyze people's Instagram posts. We found out basically that uh, you know, people who, who had been diagnosed with depression, their pictures tended to be darker and bluer and grayer. Um, if they chose to use a filter, it tended to be the black and white filter inkwell. That's the one they chose more often than any others. You can see the differences in some of the images Danforth analyzed. Gray or blue filters versus the vibrant colors of the originals just look, well, depressing. It's not new news that people who are depressed see the world in darker colors, spend less time in social groups. But um, you know, being able to infer this from social media, that, that was something new. Danforth says it could lead the way to an app that alerts your doctor when you're in emotional trouble. Maybe five to ten years from now, if studies like the one where we've done here, um, you know, they, they bear fruit in larger groups, uh, and they're reproduced, you know, you could imagine, an, you know, installing an app, downloading an app that you consent to um, having your data um, shared with your physician so they can know when it's time to see you sooner. Danforth points out there are also huge privacy concerns involved and that more research is needed to figure out how well machines can diagnose a human's state of mind. Kevin Enix, VOA News. Now get this, life-size 3D models used by Hollywood for creating amazing visual effects can also serve as props for surgeons practicing complicated operations. Doctors at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland say even experienced brain surgeons can benefit from training on realistic life-size models of a human head. VOA's George Putich reports. Shooting a horror movie with grotesque characters often involves creating realistic three-dimensional models of faces, limbs, and depending on the level of gruesomeness, even internal organs. Based on that, surgeons at Boston Children's Hospital, working with a Hollywood special effects group, started a simulator program for practicing brain surgeries. What ended up happening is our simulations felt more and more like films. They felt like cinematography. They felt like theater. This lifelike model of a 14-year-old child's head also contains a realistic brain on which a surgeon can practice treating an excessive buildup of cerebrospinal fluid, a condition often seen among teenagers. Now, training is mostly done on cadavers and even certain fruits and vegetables. But a 3D model is better because it can be created with the specific anomaly surgeons have to operate on. 
And we can do this uh, in training courses in the United States, or we can take these models uh, and work internationally and bring them uh, to teach surgeons how to do this operation and other operations uh, using 3D printed models. It's safe, it's realistic, it's repeatable, and the real beauty of this is that we can actually use the instruments that we use in the operating room on the 3D printed model heads. Creators of 3D surgery models concede it may be a challenge to persuade their colleagues to find time to practice on their simulators, even though studies show that training improves both the efficiency and the outcome of surgeries. George Putich, VOA News, Washington.